Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm going to uh, do a quick video today on an overview of a very popular onboard air setup for trail use, and that is CO2. Uh, CO2 is very popular because you can store a lot of energy in a small package. Uh, whenever you take regular atmospheric air and compress it, you can only put so much into a given cylinder uh, at a given size. So whenever you're talking about CO2, whenever you compress CO2 and store it under pressure, it uh, gets stored as a liquid. So you're able to store a lot more energy into a package this size or this size compared to if you just put regular compressed air in here. So at the top of the cylinder will be, uh, it will be a gas. And as you go down, you'll, it'll be a liquid. As you use the gas off the top, the liquid CO2 turns into gas. And then as you continue to use it, the liquid gets lower and lower and lower until there's no more liquid left in there. And then you would take this and exchange it for a new one that has, uh, that's full of CO2. Uh, one of the more popular names in the off-road world for this kind of setup is called Power Tank. And uh, they make some very nice equipment. Their bottles are nice, pretty bottles. They have uh, high flow CO2 regulators. They have nice sturdy mounts. But uh, one of the things that you get when you do that is a very large uh, purchase price. They are very expensive. Um, I decided years ago, around 2005 or six or so, that I was not paying for a power tank. I was just gonna build my own. After all, it's just a CO2 tank. There's nothing special about power tank other than uh, other than marketing and what they and how they pretty up all their all their equipment. Uh, so I went shopping for a CO2 tank, which is you can hear my kids yelling in the background. Um, it's very easy to find these cylinders used for cheap. So uh, this one on my right, right here, the first 20 pound CO2 tank I ever bought, which you only really need to buy one and then you just exchange it, uh, was $40 used. Uh, this little five pounder over here, I bought for $15. Um, they're out there, you can search Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist, whatever your preferred shopping experience is, and they're all over the place. Um, when I take this down to exchange it at the local the local welding supply place, it's a twenty dollar exchange. I pay them twenty dollars, they give me a brand new full twenty pound CO two bottle. Uh, with the power tank, you really can't do that. That's one of the big advantage. The big disadvantages of the power tank setup is that you're not going to take your big fancy anodized CO two tank down to your welding supply place and exchange it for one of these ugly beat beat up bottles. Um, so you have to find a place that is willing to fill that bottle and has the ability to fill that bottle. Not everywhere does. Uh, and then you have, to, you have to hope that the person doing the work, filling the bottle knows what they're doing. Uh, whenever you're working with CO2 and you need to get liquid CO2 into another bottle as a liquid, it requires a little bit of uh, know-how on how to make that work. Not all places know how to do that. You'll just wind up with a bunch of gaseous CO2 in here, which will run out very fast, or in your power tank. Um, there's nothing saying that you can't buy a power tank mount and stick your 20 pound or five pound or whatever bottle in that power tank mount. Their mounts are real nice. They're very sturdy. And you definitely want some kind of very sturdy mount to put these in, because if you get into an accident or a rollover, you do not want these things flying around inside your car or your Jeep or whatever you have, because they will kill you. Uh, this right here is like 15 pounds. This over here, whenever it's full of CO2, is very heavy. It's not 20 pounds, it's more than 20 pounds. Um, so some advantages of a CO2 setup over a standard compressed air setup. Uh, this is it, this is the whole package right here, very simple. Throw it in the Jeep, uh, hook up your air lines when you need it, hook up your air tools when you need it, when you're done, pack it back in there and, hook, and uh, you're done. On a uh, 12 volt compressor setup, you're gonna have uh, your compressor, airlines, tank, a bunch of electrics to make all that work and keep you from overfilling the tank. Uh, and then you've got a limited window on however big your air tank is to do your work before the compressor has to kick in and refill your tank again. With the CO2 setup, as long as there's gas in here, it'll run tools. You can run tools for quite a while on this or air up tires or seat beads, whatever it is that you need to do. Uh, I have seated beads with this. I've ran uh, an air compressor, or sorry, not an air compressor, a uh, 
uh, an impact gun, and an air ratchet, and pretty much every air tool you can think of off of a CO2 bottle, and it's performed great. It's also very portable. Uh, I've been able to take this with a with a, uh, an air powered stapler out into uh, our field and do work on a chicken coop with it, and <clears throat> it worked great. And I didn't have to drag a CO, I didn't have to drag a standard air compressor out there. Uh, disadvantages is you're limited. What's in the bottle is what you got. So if you get this out on the trail and you're airing up everybody's tires and you're taking off lug nuts and you run out of CO2, you're done. There's, you can't refill this bottle on the trail and you're not going to be able to exchange it on the trail. Uh, the air compressor setup definitely has an advantage there. Uh, but I'm telling you, something like this 20 pound bottle has got so much CO2 in it that if you run this out on the trail, you were basically taking an entire vehicle apart. It takes quite a while to run this out. For a year, uh, I was without a standard shop compressor in my shop. I just My old one burnt out. I didn't have the funds at the time to, to re replace it. So my CO2 setup stepped in and was my shop air for about a year. And uh, using it on a pretty regular basis, I would have to exchange these cylinders every three, every three months or so. And there are t it's $20. So that uh, was a workable stopgap, and it had enough capability to do what I wanted to do. Um, so that's pretty much all I have to say on any of this stuff. Uh, if you want to buy a power tank, more power to you. If you got the money uh, and the and the uh, if you if you got the money to do so, and you just want the power tank name and you like the way it looks, that's fine. Uh, but don't get tricked into thinking that you're getting a superior product by buying a power tank. Because uh, really, these setups work really, really well, <clears throat> um, and for a fraction of the cost. So don't get sucked into all the YouTube channels that are starting to get sponsored by some of these guys. Uh, do some some research for first before dumping hundreds of dollars into something like that. You may be able to put together something at home that does the job just as well, uh, and take that money you saved and put it into your your gas tank for going out and traveling or going on trails or whatever it is that you like to do for fun. Uh, so until next time, y'all have a good one. I'll see you around.